and it's got a buffer on it, so we're just going to kiss it with the grill. Well, come on, baby. And we're going to look out here and try to get, get it somewhat straight. Shall hold it some so it doesn't have any real sharp edges, and the wire will have a the stainless steel control wire will have a fighting chance of, of living its useful life. Well, that's it. Most excellent. We'll go polish those holes and we'll be in good shape. Everybody needs an assortment of those kind of grinders. They come in very handy. I'll knock off all the gunk. Oh, that feels nice. Smooth, that's what we're after. Smooth. What was that line in that movie? I forget it. what movie it was in, but the guy told that woman, stick with me, baby, and you'll be pooping through silk. Nasty, isn't it? That sounds nasty. Okay, that feels most wonderful. As we can see, we're starting to make a little progress. There's our rod, there's our bushing we welded up. The long end of the bushing goes outside. Oops. Let's see, which way are we? The long end goes outside, like so. And then our spring Orinskis go in like that. Where is my other spring Orinsky? The other spring Orinsky goes in like that. And there we have an assembly starting to take shape. Looks a little bit different than the original, doesn't it? Uh, so, still got a lot of work to go, but that might almost look store-bought. Kind of makes you sit back and think, man, did, did I do that? That's cool. And if I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. Okay, onward and upward and so forth and so on, etc., etc. And we'll take a break. And I've found that over the years, most uh, guys that are building airplanes out in their shops and so forth and so on, EAA members, uh, there's just a tremendous amount of them that were just like me fell in love with aviation before they can even remember. I, I've been in love with it ever since I can even remember probably my first words for airplane. Anyway, and most guys that are building airplanes are model builders. I've been a model builder ever since, uh, well, foot, ever since I was six or seven, building a million guillows and comet type rubber band powered airplanes, then control line, free flight, RC, back to control line, uh, free flight, RC, all of my life. I can't get away from it. That's a little free flight or a uh, radio control version of a real one Sportster that I had about, I don't know, five, eight, six, eight years ago. I bought it in California and flew it back home and it was blue though. So I kind of I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have an RC model of the uh, 
uh, rear one Sportster 90 horsepower deluxe version. And I couldn't find plans, so I just took a picture and eyeballed it, and that's what I came up with. And it, it's a pretty fair flying airplane, too. But anyway, the other day, uh, let's see if we can see some of the RC, I mean the uh, control line jobs. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight control line airplanes up there in the rafters. Uh, and then uh, some RC, some free flights, some old time RC. I've got junk everywhere. You can't get away from the models, man. I love them. But anyway, the other day, uh, last weekend, me and my buddy Jim Ireland and uh, Rick McGall went to uh, the uh, Georgetown swap meet, model swap meet. It's about 150 miles from here. And you're not going to believe what I found and got. Look at that. That's a Goldberg kit model, six foot two inch wingspan. He's got a four stroke engine in it. He's got all the servos in it. Aileron servos in each wing, elevator, rudder, throttle. It's all built up. He's got working shock struts on the landing gear. He's got two uh, uh, pilots in there. It's all ready to fly. I mean, that, you know, this guy went through a lot of trouble. He's got a steerable spring, uh, steerable. Uh, tail wheel with springs on it. You got the flying wires. Uh, what, what gets me is the shock struts actually work in and out. The guy did an excellent job of building this model. Got a step over there for the pilot to get into. It's uh, not really a scale step, but it's close enough. I could take a pair of pliers and bend it around to make it look like it. I mean, actually working shock struts, tube inside of a tube. This thing is ready to fly. He's even got a gas cap on it. He's got a compass on top of the instrument panel. Yeah, he screwed up on the door there. He drew the, looks like he drew the wrong door and then went back and tried to redo a, uh, the door as it's supposed to be, but he even messed that up some. He should have inked it in with more of a slope right there, and over and then up. He's got a handle, uh, a door latch. He's got instruments in there. This thing is cool, baby. It is a cool airplane. And I thought it would be great to hang up in the house. My wife put the K-Bosh on that. She don't go for that too much. This is cool. He wanted 200 bucks for it. Ready to fly. It's covered with polyspan, I think. Or one of those tissue type uh, polyester type. Uh, it looks like tissue, but it's just strong as all get out. He uh, covered it with that uh, poly span, I think, and and then uh, it's painted. It's uh, no monocoat on this thing anywhere. I don't like monocoat at all, but uh, you know, it's quick. But that is cool, man. That is just absolutely cool. Yeah, he wanted 200 bucks for it. And uh, so I, I talked to him. I said, hey, man, uh, can you come down on that? No, really, I've got a lot more uh, into it than that. Uh, so anyway, as the uh, Georgetown swap meet progressed, I talked to him a couple of times and finally got him down to 150 bucks. Man, that is one cool airplane. Big fat tires. It's cool. I like that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm having a little trouble now. 
digging around in all of my stash, I need to find a washer, a fairly thick washer. That's bigger around uh, by quite a margin than the springs uh, themselves. This is pretty much what I'm looking for. I was hoping to find something a little thicker and maybe a little bit bigger around in diameter. These nuts would be perfect. The only problem is they're heavy and uh, uh, we don't want to gain a lot of weight right here and it's a tremendous heat sink because we're going to have a tremendous problem right here keeping those springs from losing their temper when we weld that that final that nut or that washer on right there that retaining washer so anyway that's what we're doing we're digging in the stash trying to find the proper washers Okay, after all that digging, I did find the two perfect washers, uh, half inch in diameter, well, a little more than a half inch. Let's see what they are. They are nine sixteenths in diameter, quarter inch opening, uh, about uh, 50 thousandths thick, absolutely perfect. Now, I've got to arbitrarily set the butt depth here. This washer welds on. Now, I've got to figure out how much depth I want that. I think one and a half inches from the bushing one and a half inches okay baby go up there one and a half inches from the end of the bushing to the center line of the hole here that is where we're going to weld that baby. And this baby. One and a half inches. Now, the trick is to keep those springs, uh, keep them from losing their temper when we weld these on. And by the same token, when we put this into the top of the door, we've got to weld this on. So we're going to have to compress those springs back again, some back up against this and cover them with a heat sink, a wet rag, something. I'm going to have to make the welding quick so that uh, the uh, heat doesn't linger. And normally I don't subscribe to water quenching or spray quenching, but uh, what that will do in this case will when we get it welded, we'll see how the springs are doing. And if they're getting warm, I'm going to start quenching it with a spray of Windex. Or maybe with a spray of oil. Yeah, that, that would be even better. I'll use uh, penetrating oil. Because uh, we sure don't want those springs to lose their temper. Alright. Okay, we're building ourselves a sort of a heat sink here, uh, which you'll see in a minute. Give me some heat there. Uh, 
Try to bend it around there as straight as we possibly can. Then I'm going to let that cool a little bit and go in the house and uh, look around here and find me some good rags to create a heat sink. All those springs. This is a dicey operation. Okay, you can see we've got the springs fully compressed. Got a uh, Fully compressed, clamped with wood on either side. Uh, now I want this to weld in fairly squarely. Hopefully that's what this is going to do. Uh, I didn't want to clamp it with the uh, vice grips because they'll chew a gouge in the, uh, in the rod. So hopefully this will get it in there somewhat square and somewhat where we want it. Fedorinsky, come on baby. And, you know, in days past I would have done that, I, I would have welded it with an acetylene torch. I think today I'm going to use my Teague welder if I can see through the hood well enough. I'm going to do a practice run over here to set my temperature on the Teague welder. Uh, so anyway, let's set that up. Now that's ready to weld in. I'm going to put wet rags back here. I'm going to wrap it in wet rags to keep the springs cool. And uh, hopefully we can get away with it. And then the next uh, scary part is welding this into the channel up there. The springs have to be compressed again and uh, gonna have to, and wet rags and gonna have to make a quick weld or, or those springs will lose their temper and go flat. And then you're, as they say, up the creek. This is my Heliart machine or Teague welder. Uh, that little machine will do just about anything you can imagine. That is a good machine. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm going to have to get a stronger pair of glasses to be able to see through that hood to Teague well. I just can't see what I'm doing. So we're going to do this the old oxyacetylene way. I hope for the best. A lot of heat. Let's hope for the best. My goggles, my glasses. This is one of those times when we're going to go easy on the uh, preheat and post heat. We just can't afford it. Uh, may wind up with a brittle world, but.
Yep, I made more heat. my rod as a heat sink there. Alright, we're going to call that welder. Still feels relatively cold back there. I don't like doing this. We got to get that cooled as quickly as possible. heat sink off. And just hope for the best. That's still cold. Anxious moments. Yeah, I'm going to have to get maybe some uh, prescription lenses for my welder. I just cannot see the bead. I've tried both of my sets of glasses and it doesn't work. I just can't see. Well, when I was younger, I was a welding son of a gun. Go clean that baby up and polish it out and uh, get the other one ready. Okay, as we see, everything is rotating and pushing in freely. Hopefully it will stay that way after the welding. And 
And now I've just got to pull that spring back. I'm going to fill that bottom full of water because I'm going to have to get a good tack right here. I'm not going to be able to get down to the bottom. So I'm going to have to have a, a really substantial tack weld right there. Do it on the other side, I guess. Boy, that's tough. Everything's still rotating. I'm going to go get some water, fill that tray full of water. Yeah, I'll put a uh, gusset on there to help things along. Put a little gusset in there or something like that. Zip it, zip it, zip it. And that way uh, we'll have a fighting chance of staying in there. Okay. See what we're doing here. Right there. That little baby right there has to be tack welded on either side. Now the tack welds tend to want to break. So I'm going to put this gusset in. Foot. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. And I'll just zip it around and uh, and then that'll have a fighting chance. The thing I'm afraid of right now is scale build up in that bushing. If that happens. And that's going to take a lot of uh, elbow grease to get that baby you know, to working right. Right now it's working fine. Let's see my little spring retainer. I'm going to go in there and fill that full of water, put rags around it, and then try to weld it as quickly as possible. Alright, the moment of truth, we can ruin the whole thing right now, at this moment.
rod down here is warm but not hot.